Go ahead, Colby. Um, I mean, because it's they were they're kind of the epitome of like what a fool is or like comedy. So the makeup has to be really expressive in that way. Um, they're also made to be distractions, I think, from you know the regular life in a way. So they were they're super obviously animated in that thing, but like you said, they have they help people also. Right. So they're kind of comedic relief for, I mean, for what they're a symbol of comedic relief, I would say. And just as important as like crying, they're on the other side. But there's also sad clowns too. I think they're a good represent they're represented a good representation of extreme emotion, either way. So right. they're extreme drama or extreme comedy. Did any of that's a really good um, that's a very good summary. So uh, thank you for doing the, the work on doing, looking up clown. And did anybody else look up clown and get any information? Kara, yes. Well, I actually know a real life clown. Okay, really good. That yeah. is super exciting. So tell us about it. Uh, he worked for the circus back in the day, um, Barnum and Bailey, I believe. He was a clown for years and I brought up, I got his picture and I like his because his whole face isn't white. Do you he, want a screen share? Here. Yeah. Okay. Let me just do that so that you can do that. Okay. And go ahead and I'll unpin so that you get the whole, go ahead and screen share. Okay. Can you see? Yep. So this right here, this first one is him. Um, and I like it because he didn't white out his whole face like they did down here. Right. And he just did sections and that's what he did every night. He also, he's a genius and he's the funniest person I know. Um, he also did those people, I don't know if you like in Vegas and stuff, or you're walking by someone and they're all silver or all gold and he does like the robot. He used to do that too. Like he would do it out of costume just at his house and it would just crack me up. But, um, there actually truly back in the day was a school. He had to go to clown school um, and they had to learn, you know, everything from mannerisms to, you know, how to interact with the crowd. And, um, and then of course I have Cirque. So I had to put in some of my Cirque people. So I actually, um, the two down at the, on your lower left screen are also wearing, they're wearing a bald cap wig. So there's a bald yeah. cap as well as a wig attached so that they're creating that bald cap look. Yeah. And there still is a clown school. Oh, really? Yeah. There's well, I wasn't sure because the circus is no longer, so. Yeah, there used to be, there used to actually be more, I think there were three clown schools, but Ringling, for the Ringling Clown School, Barnum and Bailey, and another clown school. But, you know, circus is almost considered a school these days. Um, right. yeah, great. Thank you. So, but my question was, and I had asked everyone while you were gone, like, so he looks like he didn't cover his eyebrows. He just whited them out. Yeah. But like these two, so did they like full on, you think like glue stick cover their eyebrows? Yeah. Well, I can see his eyebrows right here. I can see the guy on the lower left's eyebrows, but there's a couple of things. So you can see him here. I'm going to show you a couple of things that uh, the and the guy next to him didn't cover his eyebrows, oh. right? Here, yeah. the guy with the um, carrot top and the pink yeah. eyeshadow didn't cover his eyebrows. But what oh, they're true. doing is a technique of distraction. So they are in, he's making a a more obvious eyebrow, so that you're not looking at what his eyebrow is. But we'll talk about eyebrow blocking, and I have a couple of uh, things to show you about that as well. So anyone else want to talk about their clown work or their clown discoveries? And let me see if Christine has joined us. Okay. And Christine, did you do clown research and history? That's what we're talking about now. Yes, I found my two. Great. Okay, so you have your images. 
And what we're talking about is the historical value of clown. So let's go to, um, I'm gonna screen share and I'm gonna you break out group? Cara. No. no. So if everyone would mute. And then I will screen share my screen to show you some clown work. First, I'm going to show you this idea of developing your clown character. And this is what Kara was talking about is how do you develop your clown character? And this saying, clowns like jello need flavor. So the white faced clown, and that's one where it is uh, primarily white face. It's a show type clown. The clown wears bright, colorful, fanciful costumes. This clown gets the gags or routine started. So they sometimes go up and they'll do something physical to someone and they'll be doing the opening act in a circus. At one time, this was the only clown used in a circus. And I'll post this document too. Traditionally is a match two piece or a jumpsuit type, neck rough, pom poms. This is the one that we often see, we think about this clown in a parade. The neat, or grotesque is also the white faced clown. The neat is the aristocracy of the clown, looks down on other clowns, pulls tricks on them, tries to maintain dignity, serves as a straight man. If you know what a straight man is, they're not the one that's laughing or that they have the prank played on. They're the one that nothing ever affects. They're skillful and the makeup should have simple, clean, elegant lines. The grotesque, imitates the neat clown, but is not as skillful and often is stupid or silly, not as coordinated. They will, their body is as coordinated, but their clown character appearance is much less coordinated. So they're big, bold colors and a bulbous nose. August clown is slapstick style. Costume could be a plaid suit, mixed Mac colors, a prankster, Pulling some kind of goat, uh, pulling some kinds of jokes on other clowns, which often backfires on him, and exposes his own stupidity. So that's the difference between that and the neat clown. The neat clown always is the straight man, is always has dignity. The slapstick thinks they have dignity, but they do something, and they expose their own silliness. They set up the routine for the punchline. They're the second clown to be in a circus. And sometimes the European August is a drunken clown audience member, a natural everyman. Not usually white, but sometimes a light color on the skin, white around the eyes and mouth is typical for emphasis. So that may be more of what Kara's friend was, kind of like that. The hobo, tramp, and bum clown tempts to look nice. Uh, the tramp is more pathetic and lowly and tattered, is the lowest socially. And they're usually the fall guy. People want to make pranks on them. They get water and pies in the face, take the fall. They get dunks. They win the hearts of the audience because they're the low man on the totem pole. The costume is basically old clothing and sometimes either overly large or, or overly small, making them seem like their arms and legs are sticking out and their pants are too short and all that kind of thing. The makeup is kind of the same for each, varying in design, but the character remains the same, unshaven face, somewhat slovenly appearance. It originated in the United States during the depression era. And this is the only truly American clown. Emmett Kelly is the most famous. And we have a very, there was a very famous um, television celebrity called Red Skelton and he had a very famous hobo clown called Clem Cadillhopper, Clem Cadillhopper, and he played him in a segment on television during his variety show. And you all know that Carol Burnett had a variety show and she had a clown character that was somewhat like this as the cleaning lady. So there's a wide variety of of what comes under the category of hobo, tramp, or bum clown. And then there's the character specialty clown. 
This clown is defined by personality or action, could be a nursery rhyme, a cartoon, a profession like cowboy or nurse. Costume and makeup should be representative of the character type. So if you're being a cowboy, you're gonna look like more like a cowboy and, and exaggerated in the same way that Colby said. So here's some tips for clown makeup. We're gonna go through all the documents and then we'll do an example and have you tie those into your makeups. Your design should be simple and neat. So take a look now at your worksheet. And if you don't have a worksheet, make sure that you're filling a worksheet out now. It needs to follow your own facial lines. Now we've worked with our own facial lines quite a lot, finding our orbital fossa, finding the nasal labial fold. And for clown, those two things, eyes and mouth are probably the most expressive elements. So you wanna make sure that you're working with your nasal labial, that's gonna help define your mouth area. And then your fossa is gonna define your eye area. And Cara brought up about covering eyebrows and we'll talk about that as well. All exposed flesh must be covered with makeup, especially if this is white face in particular, you want, to close, you want to cover everything. So you want to cover your ears, you want to cover your neck if you are a white face clown. Unless you're a clown that ends there at the chin and then your neck is with a big tall collar and tie, then you wouldn't need to do that. Using no lip color on the top lip helps in creating a deeper smile. Using no lip color on the bottom lip helps in creating a deep frown or sad mouth. So like what Colby said, they're extremes. So they're either extremely smiley or extremely sad or frown. So these are some techniques that you wanna take a look at is if you omit the top lip, you can have a very big smile. Even if your face is not actually smiling there is a smile painted on your face and the same is true with a frown. Do not allow the width of the mouth to go beyond the width of your eyes. So too wide creates the illusion of a gash or slashed face. So who's very famous that did that, that took their uh, mouth way beyond their eyes? The Joker. The Joker. Yeah, in contemporary, you, it, it really creates a gash, you know, or a slashed face once you get that line past the eye because it's, it then looks like the, uh, the face has been cut. So it's a really good technique to remember with the eye width. Remember, we use that eye width for how far away, your, how far apart your eyes should be, how far apart your eyebrows should be. And now we have the width of the eye on the face. The mouth should be no further than that for the clown mouth. Avoid using too many colors. White, red, and black are most traditional, but they're not the only ones you can use. And right now in your kit, because while I have a lot of colors here, you are limited to what is in your kit, unless you have some additional colors because you have um, you know, blue eyeshadow and you have some other things that you wanna use and that's completely okay. Dark color shapes show up best against a white face. Light color shapes may have to be outlined in black. So we really want a very clean, precise group of lines. And if you're doing a light color or even red, you may want to uh, outline in black. Smenson, what's your question? Also, Pam, um, do you have any idea where we can buy the body paint? It's like, like if you wanna, if you want to paint that on your face, like white colors or? So body paint's a whole different, uh, you don't need body paint to do it on your face. You know, you have the white cream liner that you use. I'm going to do that today and you'll see how that looks. But yeah, you can buy body paint. You can go to Cinema Secrets online. You can do a lot of other makeups, uh, Namie online. I don't know if Namie will sell to you. But Cinema Secrets will sell to just about anybody. So I will make a note. I think that's in your resources. Uh, Cinema Secrets closed, but um, Namies or Friends or even Nigel's, they'll all sell to the public. Right, so I can put those in if you, um, if you want. I can put those under your resources. And uh, 
but those are just makeup. I mean, you could even, uh, I'll do this in just a minute. Uh, if you just Google that, you could easily find where to buy it. Um, right now, there's going to be a lot of Halloween stores that even carry it. So, um, but back to our topic at hand, so that we can move on. Um, dark background warrants or means light color shapes or light outline would help. So if you have a dark background, you might want to do a white outline around it. If a nose is used, and I'll, sh I'll show you some simple noses that you can actually make at home. You can make a sponge nose very easily. Also make sure to paint one on the face in case the false nose falls off or is broken. And that is really that I'm telling you, if it can happen, it will happen. So even if you put on a false nose, you want to make sure you paint one on your face just in case. If you have a large nose, you can just paint it. An artificial nose is used for tramp or august clowns. Size of nose depends on individual clowns. Rubber or latex noses can be trimmed to fit the contour of your nose and face. Have spare noses if you go to do a performance. Nerf ball and sponge balls are good noses and I'm gonna show you how those work. Men need to be clean shaven or incorporate facial hair into the design. So I'm uh, gonna guess that Colby is going to be working with a hobo clown. Well, I shaved for this class. Well, good for you. I mean, you have to do it for gender anyway, so. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I stood in front of the mirror today for a long time, like nervous. <laughs> How long had you had your beard? Three years, four years, I don't wow. know. Uh, yeah. I, I applaud I, you with I, your courage, good job. Well, it's okay because it's not regular society. So it's like, I don't really see a lot of people and I <laughs> usually have a mask and I can keep telling myself like, it looks the same and no one, whatever. You know, that's so funny because I saw a woman wearing a mask today, but she would pulled it down. And I think she was walking her dog probably when I was out really early and it, it was a black mask. And I thought, oh, look, now everyone can be a bearded that's lady. True bearded lady they just pull their mask down around their chin and it seriously looks like a bearded lady you know that's funny so it is kind of the same uh colby you can pretend you have a beard and and then we have these we're just inventing a whole new interesting population i know i just need to wait though that's what it is so today was like a test run i think this week i'm gonna go without it but and i'm hoping that michael doesn't yell at me because i got cast in the, a play but oh that's okay he, uh, he i'll uh i can i can protect you i got your back on that <laughs> uh, i'll make sure the watchman doesn't have a beard oh thank you he's supposed to be first of all he's the character is supposed to be young and he's yeah. run all the way to the palace to talk to him to creon so you know he in contrast creon would be one that would have a beard and tiresias but but watchman is going to be a soldier okay so let's look at this really, this is the primary, uh, you learn this in elementary school, uh, color wheel and primary colors. We're just gonna talk about primary are these three down the left-hand side, red, yellow, blue. And they are primary because you do not mix those colors together. You can't mix two colors together and get red. You have to start with red. You cannot mix two colors together to get yellow and you cannot mix two colors together to get blue. And then looking at this um, red plus yellow equals orange, yellow plus blue equals green, red, blue plus red equals violet or purple. You can manipulate a lot of colors in your kit because although you don't have primary colors, you have a fairly good yellow, you have a fairly good red in your fresh cut and you also have maroon, which is a fairly decent red. So you can easily do uh, red, yellow, orange. You have a decent purple that you can add more red to or more white to to get a different color. So you wanna think about stretching your colors as much as you can. Now, when we look at this, it implies that they're equal and they are not. Blue is always going to overpower yellow. 
So when you're mixing yellow and blue together to create green, you are doing, if we were doing talking about drops of food coloring, you would do one drop of blue and 15 drops of yellow. That's how overpowering blue is to yellow. Yellow is always going to appear lighter. And then when yellow moves down, remember what we talked about. What's that? When we talk about the value chart, remember you did your value chart for your makeup kit. When we talk about the value chart, yellow goes up to white, but when it goes down to black, it turns into olive green. Okay, it really, when you add dark to yellow, like a, even a black, you're gonna turn it to olive green. In blue plus red uh, to create violet or purple, these two colors are very um, suspect. In other words, I say violet, I don't know what color you're looking at. I'm looking at what my violet is and my head may not be the one in your head. And the way I would describe it is in maybe in violet, you have more red and in purple, you have more blue. That is completely arbitrary and that may not be the case for you at all. So let's look beyond this little wheel. So one of the characteristics that you can say is they appear opposite on the color wheel and these are color complements. So use color complementary colors in their pure intensity to enliven each other. You may have seen a green plant that has a tiny red outline on the leaf and it makes the leaf seem more vibrant. This is the kind of thing we're talking about by using the complementary color. The complement of yellow is violet or purple and the complement of orange is blue. So you take our three primary colors, blue, red, and yellow. And the secondary colors are colors made from two colors next to each other on the wheel. So red and yellow are next to each other, they make orange. Yellow and blue are next to each other, they make green. Blue and red are next to each other, they make violet. Directly across the wheel, yellow is enhanced by its complement, violet. When you can see that I'm going through gray, which means it also cancels it out. So if you mix blue with orange, you're gonna kill the orange. Right? If you mix violet with yellow, you're going to also subdue the yellow so it will no longer be yellow. And same with green and red. If you want to make a very dull, muddy gray, you can put red with green or green with red. Okay? Mix complementary hues opposite on the color wheel to get gray, or I would just say mud, a mud color. To get a tint, and we talked about this, add white. It's a highlight value. To get a shade, which is darker, add black, which is a low dark value. And sometimes you maybe aren't gonna add black. Maybe you'd like to add your misty violet, okay? So it gives it a much more interesting thing. So here's what we call the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. If we were in class, I'm going to demonstrate this today, but this is a, a water-based makeup technique. So we do have water-based makeup, and I'm going to show you the white foundation in water-based so that you can see the difference between the cream liner that's in your kit, the white uh, water-based foundation, and a clown white, which we also have in the shop, but we don't have it. And this is a very quick hand drawing of what we probably now have come to think of as more like emoji. And clowns have this broad appeal. So perplexed, maybe you're gonna do your brows this way, frowning slightly into each other, but up on the edge, and you're gonna have a slightly curled mouth. If you want to create different shapes, satisfied, they're taking the mouth way beyond the eye here, these little emoji things are very good ideas to do a quick sketch, okay? So that's that, that will be posted so that you can see that on your clown page. It's something that you can work with uh, in terms of working with your makeup kit. And then from now on, refer to that for your color chart. 
And then I'm going to talk about eyebrow blocking. And Christine, is this on topic for what we're talking about with clown? Yes, I already have both of mine and I love to share them. Okay, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to have a time to share for everyone. And we'll just see that in just a few minutes. Thanks for letting me know that you have both of yours. I'm really glad for that. And hopefully your, your makeup chart is completed, which is the makeup that you're going to do. Remember, you have a face that you're filling in. That's always available on our modules. And I had a student just ask me about that recently. So I wanted to make sure that you know exactly where that is. And let's see if I can go to, oh, I'll just go to here. So this is what we were looking at and let's go to Canvas. So remember on Canvas, in the modules where we did our face shape, here's where you find your schematics. So if anybody's missing one, whoop, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, sorry, I just suddenly got a new internet flash, but you saw that on modules, you can see your schematic is right there, right? Everybody have any uh, questions on that? Everyone knows where to find them. So you have plenty of them. And if you needed them, then when I gave your makeup kit, you can do it. Okay, so now we've come to a time when you guys can share. So Christine, why don't you share yours first? Okay. My first one is actually the... We can So this is, this is the Red Skelton character, and we'll look at the images for him. This, the Clem Hopper is this character wearing the plaid suit. Remember that was one of our characters, kind of a uh, pale face. He did Freddy the Freeloader. This is his famous hobo clown. Different, slightly different in color. He did a lot of black and white. Uh, imagery. And even so much that there are tribute artists to him. He also did this character, not necessarily a clown character, but you can see he's, does that remind you guys of anybody? I think Jim Carrey gets a lot of uh, facial expression from him. So think about before we, when we embrace certain contemporary people, they usually are standing on the back of someone else. And he did these weekly. He had a weekly variety show. And so people would look to see who he was going to be next. And this is one of those things about, this is a Confederate soldier. Okay. You can tell by the costume and he has created this face shape that was um, really typical there's a really great picture of him as the hobo clown. This cigar was requisite, the collarless collar band shirt with no collar points. And then the stippled on uh, beard, okay? We'll talk about stipple. Spencer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes? I remember that face, the one you did with the Tim Coey one. Reminds me a lot about the skirt quote from Alice in Wonderland. So starting with the cream liner in your kit, uh, you can look at, I want a stiffer brush than that. Okay, this is a stiffer brush. You can put on the makeup as I did with a knife, palette, a palette, some kind of blade, you can put it on like this. If you want to do heavier, you can powder in between. What are you going to powder with when you're working with white? What do you think would happen if you powdered with your translucent? It would go beige or muddy. It would go beige and muddy. That's absolutely correct. So you can use baby powder, and you can use cornstarch. Now, the great thing about cornstarch is 
of course, it's a food grade item. So it will, there's no way it can damage you. It's very super hyper absorbent. That's the point of cornstarch when you're using it in cooking. And you can put it on exactly the same way that you put on your powder by just using a puff. So I fill it up and then I put it on. Now, if I wanna get it more opaque, the thing about cornstarch is you can really nail stuff on your face and not have it come off. You can layer it up. If you want to be sort of uh, like that light pink clown, you can just keep it that way. Keep it one layer, right? But see how I can put this on top of it and make it more opaque if I want that. See that? It's like, uh, you know, when you're trying to do, if you don't have false eyelashes and you want your eyelashes to be super big, um, you can, I, sorry, I should do this. Right, you want your eyelashes to be big, you just powder in between. So you can do that two or three times. That will give you an opaque white, if you'd like opaque white, with your own kit. If you want something um, that is different, you can use this incredible product and some people just fall in love with this, uh, which is called Clown White. And here it is. This is a professional Clown White. It is very, very dense. You can see that it's nothing liquid. It's really intense. To take it out of here, I am going to scrape. And you can see it's really very viscous, super great. I can put it on. It really will stick. It is completely opaque. So if I wanted to cover, for example, if I wanted to block my eyes out this way, and if you wanted to do a non-translucent geisha look, you could do something like this then I can simply, I put on eye color, but um, I mean, I put on eyebrow color, but I think I can still do it. So the thing about blocking out your eyebrows is that you wanna make sure that every hair is covered and the places in between the hair is covered. And if it's not cover, if the coverage isn't clear enough, what am I going to do? Powder. And then I can repeat. This is the cornstarch. Okay, so I can completely get rid of that eyebrow, no problem. And then brush with my brush. And I can use my brush on the clown white also and shape it. Okay. And then one other thing I'd like to show you is the water base foundation. We'll talk about other eyebrow blocking techniques, but not right this second, unless you need them. One thing about a water base is it looks like this. It's just in here, you know, it's not going to come out. That's it's, you know, this one's almost empty, but you have to use water. So I'm going to put water in this container. It will always, I use the lid often. And you put this on with a sponge. So I'm floating my sponge in my water. This is the way that uh, pancake makeup works. If you've ever heard of that term pancake, uh, we had a 
in the basically the dark ages in the 50s. You could use pancake, wet your sponge. I've wet it by putting my sponge into water, squeezing it so that it is now damp and not overly wet. And then I can take my wet sponge and put it into this foundation. And again, this reminds you of powering up your brush, okay? And you can see that it is not quite as white, but it's not bad. And the huge advantage of this is that it dries and then it comes off with water. Okay, so that's a great, that's a really cool thing to know. You wanna avoid streaks on this. And then what do you do if you have mostly a white face and then you want to put in additional color? How are you gonna work that out? How are you gonna work that out? So no color bleeds on top of another color. Do you know the technique, Christine? You can, if you know the technique, you can say, I'm asking about a very specific technique. Yeah, I know a different technique, but I, it co relates to this one. It is... We're talking about putting color on top of white. Yeah, you just need to make sure it's powder, not anything else but powder. And it has to be colored and opaque. So if you used a charcoal powder and you put it on top of clown white, even though this hasn't been fixed, it would work. See, this is really, look, if I do this, it will, it will smear. Yeah. So you want to be very careful about that. If I do the, the cornstarch, it won't smear. If I put cornstarch on this, it will not move. So there's a couple of things that you can do. And one of them is you can remove where you want to put it. You can do that with a Q-tip. You can do that with a coffee stirrer. So if I have an all over white makeup and I need to just make a um, line, then I can do this. And then I remove the makeup where I want it. I take my stick first and then I'll use my Q-tip. You can actually put it on top if you have, do a very short stroke. So I can take my Q-tip and then make my line even cleaner. And then I can put another color in there. So let's say I wanna put yellow in there. And I can do that by just putting in yellow. Was strange, I got red off the yellow. So I can put it in. Okay, and that that's way you have a very clean line. If that's the case, wouldn't you just want to like <clears throat> do all the colors first and then go fill in with white around it? Depends on how many lines you have that the amount of work that you do is always gonna be going from the greatest to the least. So if you're doing a lot of color and you're doing white in between, then you can do white outline. That's the same as white outline, right? So you, absolutely, that's completely fine. You don't have to do whatever your white is first. That's absolutely not necessary. So, um, you can do that, but you can also, if you're gonna do a mosaic kind of thing and do white in between, that's completely fine as well. 
If I wanted to put yellow on top of my place that has already been powdered, then I can only, I can fill up my brush and I can only go as far as I collect white on my brush and then I can move down. But putting that white underneath the yellow really tends to brighten that up. See the contrast between yellow on skin and yellow on white. So you might be able to use it as an advantage. Okay. All right, any questions before I let you stop, start and I try and deal with whatever person's trying to get a hold of me maniacally. I'm sorry about all those beeps. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording. This works if you're putting black on top, white on top of black. You may only get this far. You may only be able to do a half an inch if you're putting a color on top so that you don't contaminate the color and create a tint instead of retaining the color. Questions? Okay, so yeah, I think although it changed the proportion to elongate the blue diamond, it helped separate it from the heart a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. And then if you, uh, you know, if you wanted to just punch the red up on the lip, you could just do a black underline just on the bottom. Oh. Yeah. You know, to just help that a little bit of brightness, but not necessary. So nice job. Thank you. And I know it was a struggle. <laughs> you know, that white went on so much better than I thought it was going to be. Good. Like, and pretty okay. If I had more time, I probably could have really like done, a, you know, layers and. But you know what? It's just, again, it's a technique. That's yeah. why this is one of the, this is one of the skills learning techniques. And you'll see when I, I've put in the clown assignment. So you, when you upload it, it is one of the ones that is not graded on execution. It's graded on preparation and you're really learning new skills. And that's definitely you're learning new skills. Cool. So very good, nice job. And Christine, are you ready? Are you ready, Christine? Almost. Okay. So we'll just go through so we can see everybody's finished product. Amy, are you ready? Yeah. Let's see her. Nice. You're muted. The two clowns that I researched were clowns that were in heartbreak. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to go for, but um, they tried, but they're clowns, so they're trying to put on a smile in front of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, one thing about blocking out your eyebrows, if you, you've done it um, outside of the eyebrow area, mm -hmm. and so you really want to try to confine the blocking to just the hair. And it's very tough, but when you get when you get it off of the brow onto the skin, then you see a greater contrast because the white on the brow gives you kind of an even tone, and then the white above the brow makes it brighter. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. And it's just a technique. Did you selfie? Not yet. Hey, take a picture. Hey, Colby, coming to you. Hey. Okay. So let's see how your star is coming. Yeah. It's hard to do on my own face. It is. I think one of the things that is happening for you here is you've put it so far back on the face. If it was more forward, it would have been easier to see. That's just, a, that's a learning technique, right? Yeah. And then I don't remember the other uh, white texture things on your face. What are you implying by that? I needed to get the sprinkles to stick. Oh, I see. I forgot about the sprinkles. Yeah, I know you there you can see them, but I thought it would be a nice effect, but I couldn't get the sprinkles to stick to my face without using Snow White. Mm -hmm. And you said don't ever use liquid latex on your face. 
No, right? no, don't use liquid light to hair? spray with hair. So would it have drawn? Would it have dried clear if I put liquid latex? Uh, it would have dried clear if you had done spiricum. Okay. Spiricum is your clear adhesive. Latex is always going to have a pigment to it. Okay, so what I would have done differently is I would have used spear gum instead of the white to get it to stick. Mm -hmm. But I just kind of dump sprinkles all over my face towards, you know, outside. But I'm pretty impressed with a concept. Yeah, the evenness of the white is good. The brows, you know, creating the red and then outlining the black on it to give it that uplift. Creating a star is very hard. And one thing that you might want to consider if you did it in the future would be to create a stencil that you could actually put on your face and then you could outline, which would maybe make it, you'd be able to tell shape and size then and see if that was better. So that's another thing that's kind of interesting about it. And if your sprinkles are big enough, you can actually just put a dot on the back of the sprinkle and then put the dot on your face like this. So instead of dotting your face, put it on your sprinkle, and then put the sprinkle on your face. And you and you could have used even um, nose and scar wax or a little tiny bit of your cream makeup and okay. stick it on there and then just stuck it to your face and it would have stayed enough. But you have to put it on your face. You have to put it on the sprinkle and then to your face, not put the adhesive on your face and then sprinkle. Got it. Yeah, that might work with glitter. Though, because glitter is, a, you know, it's more uh, airborne. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a funfetti clown. Exactly. That sounds great. So, how was your selfie? Good. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you. And Ida, can you can you talk now? Yes, I'm here. You have not. You're. I is okay and recovered. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. They were just stinging so bad. I had to like wipe everything off my eyes and kind of do it over again. Um, that can absolutely happen if you get um, something in your eye. For example, yes. sand in your eye. Can nice. So like Suicide Squad. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I just Googled a picture, I like generally and just mm -hmm. found something and kind of one of them. I and one thing that's great about it, very clean lines, you know, mm -hmm. we've got good contrast from the face to the line yeah. and then we've outlined the nose so that we really see it, you know, okay. that, by doing the red here and then outlining with the black, it's really terrific. So good job. Thank you. Nice. Thanks. All right, did you selfie? Uh, no, I just finished, so I'm going to go to okay. it right now. Excellent. Nice job. Christine, I'm coming to you next. Almost ready? Almost. I'm just doing my finishing touches. Okay, and then we need to selfie because class is over. So you can clean up. And we'll see you all with your animals, two um, pictures of animal on Wednesday. And we'll be with, we'll be with color and shape and also um, working with your worksheet to try and get a really good example. You'll want to do at least two different pictures of the same animal and then maybe an additional one in profile but you want two different pictures because they will tell you different pieces of information. Are we gonna execute the animal on Wednesday? We'll execute the animal. I'm ready. We'll execute animal on Wednesday. So I'm just finishing putting up the assignment part for the rubric on clown and I'll put animal up also today. I'm ready. Okay. And Christine, what's your worksheet look like? Like this. But I didn't complete it in time. Okay, so you'll want to make all the notes on your worksheet and then you'll want to paint your worksheet so it matches your face the way it is now, okay? Yeah, I like it. Um, I'm trying, uh, I'm thinking about your research pictures of Pennywise and Sawface and uh, trying, it's, it's hard for me because without your worksheet being done, I'm not really sure where you were going, right? 
Yeah, I was going for Pennywise and Saw together. I, I remember that's what you were doing. And so, but your worksheet, you showed me Pennywise and you showed me Saw, but what I put in my mind is not what you put in your mind, right? We can, I don't know what's in your mind. So it's important that you tell me what's in your mind by drawing it on your worksheet. Yeah, I only get so far as the skin and the eyes and lips. So go ahead and take your selfie and then draw your draw your sketch on your worksheet so that you can get those uploaded, okay? Okay. That's in the clown assignment page. Okay, I was thinking of calling mine Penny Saw. You can call them whatever name you want. There's always a place for a name on your worksheet. So you should put the name of the assignments clown. The performer name is you. And you can have your character name be Penny Saw. Okay. Okay. And then do you know what we're doing on Wednesday? This is it execution on animals. Animal. So you want to pick one animal, two pictures at of the same animal but two different images so that you can then draw your animal picture on your schematic okay i'm really good doing giraffes i love giraffe they're very great but their spots are very complicated so be prepared not for me but too easy okay so take your picture so you don't lose the makeup okay you on wednesday okay all right any other questions no but I do look scary. You do look scary. <laughs>